This video is about using uh, a BIM model, in this case a Revit model, uh, in order to uh, take the 4D, the time aspect, and uh, the 5D, the cost aspects, uh, in, into consideration, as described in our uh, BIM uh, execution uh, uh, planning guide. Here we have the, the 5D aspect of a cost estimation and the, uh, the 4D description uh, of uh, the time uh, aspect. And we also have this in Danish, uh, it's under page uh, section 20 in the translation and also section 19 as described here for the 40. So uh, that's the goal and in order to do this uh, we need to first of all make a work breakdown structure of our model so that we have an overview of what our model consists of. This is just an example. Uh, we have the, the model itself and then we break it down into site uh, to groundworks, to foundations, slabs, etc. And the idea behind this is to, to make sure that we have all the items that need to be priced in the project identified. And once we've done that, we can then do a library of prices because uh, drawing the prices in directly from a price book are probably not that good. In fact, they're probably not that accurate. So to summarize, once you've made your model, you should do a work breakdown structure, breaking the model down into its components. And once you've identified the different components, you should go in and make your own library. And the way to make your own library is to go into uh, Sigma, for example, and um, start a new uh, Sigma session and choose library, a new library, and you will get this green uh, strip indicating this is a library. I've made a library for my project. I haven't taken all the components because this is just an example, but I've taken some important components which I'm going to use. Uh, for example, the cavity walls, some windows, and, um, and some, uh, um, some foundations and so on. Uh, I've also made my own uh, uh, particular item, for example, prefabricated slabs. This is something I've made myself. I've gone, gone in and looked at a prefabricated slab and I've found out how much materials, uh, how many, you know, uh, what is the cost of one square meter of material, how long does it take to make a square meter of material in hours, and uh, how long uh, it would take to mount one square meter. In other words, uh, the, the cost of, of mounting a square meter. And these times I've put in myself and these costs I've put in myself. So these, this is my own library, whereas these, uh, these libraries here, are from the VNS uh, library that's available with Sigma. And if I break that down, you can see also that is broken down. If we look at this one here, or rather, I think it's better to take the cavity wall here because it's much more uh, comprehensive. If I click on the cavity wall, you can see the cost of actually uh, the materials for one, ca uh, one square meter are, is this, and the time for one square meter is, is this. If you're not satisfied with this time, you can always end, uh, alter the time to something that suits you. And this is the cost of um, mounting uh, or the, um, the building site higher for machinery and so on. So you can always alter your library to fit your project. Uh, you don't have to accept what's in the VNS price book. And you can also make your own library as I did here in this case where I've used my own experience figures and I've figured out how much each square meter will cost and how much time it would take to do a square meter. So once you have identified all the items in your uh, in your project here, you make your library here. And then you can do a calculation uh, by attaching uh, this library here to the model here. To attach the library to the model, I need to have an add-in and this add-in is available from Sigma. You just simply download it and it will uh, read up into this add-in section. So what I do now is I choose uh, an item. I have now chosen an outer wall here and I want to link this outer wall to my library. So I go into the add-in, I go into element properties and you can see the, the wall I've chosen is this one. So I go into type parameters and I find uh, a type code for my library. If I click on here, uh, I um, simply navigate to where my library is on my, uh, my, my computer. 
in this case it's on an external drive so I choose it and I go into the cavity ball and I choose the cavity ball this is the number of that cavity ball from the VNS system in my own uh, system I put uh, my own individual number this will be type coded so I'm going to choose this cavity ball here and click OK and you can see the cavity ball description is here this is directly from VNS I've just translated it in, into English and this is the type code which is a which is a SFB number when I click OK the uh, program will choose uh, the Sigma program will choose all the outer walls that have the same properties as this outer wall and count them all or take off quantities of them all and I have to do this with every single thing I'm going to choose for example I'm going to choose uh, this uh, this floor element here and I'm going to attach that to my own library uh, um, um, item which I made myself so I'm going to click there make sure that I have uh, chosen uh, the library on the uh, external drive go in and here choose that uh, that particular item I, I had made myself and click OK to that and you can see my own little number system is coming and my own little description is coming click OK to that similarly I'm going to choose uh, a window and do exactly the same in this case I go into completions and choose that window and you can see this is type coded to the window now. Finally, I choose the roof, and there is a large roof here and a very small bit of roof here too, and they all have the same uh, properties. So I simply go in and I uh, find a type code uh, from my library for that too. And here's the roof, and I've got the type code and everything's okay. So I've chosen uh, walls, I've chosen a slab, I've chosen uh, this particular roof and these these are some of the, I could do it with all the other elements but I, I simply don't have the time on this video to take all the elements. I'm just using this as an example. Having chosen my uh, link, my, uh, my uh, model elements to my uh, library, I can then export it to Sigma and in a few minutes you will see uh, Sigma open up or the export to Sigma open up. I need to give this a new number because I've used this before I don't want to mess it up by mixing it up with the previous file and I need to go in and choose the elements that I've type coded. Uh, I have uh, taken some um, prefabricated floors so I choose floors. I haven't type coded this floor so I deselect it. I've, ha I've got some walls I haven't type coded these walls so I don't want to see them in the calculation uh, uh, I also have uh, some windows here and I have the roof here. So when I click OK to that, all this should go over um, uh, here and uh, uh, Sigma will begin to take off quantities for my uh, particular project. And Sigma has actually opened up here, you can see here. Um, this is my library, I'm, I'm just going to collapse that and here's my calculation. On the different floors, I have floors that are measured up, and I have walls that are measured up. So if I click on the walls, you can see the different cavity walls here uh, are measured up. And I also have the windows on those particular floors that are measured up. Uh, but I haven't got the prices yet, because in order to get the prices, I need to uh, actually go in, and uh, I need to um, update the library from uh, or make sure my library is updated. So I go into library here, update, and update it from the library I have um, made on my uh, hard drive here. I've chosen that library, and when I update here, you should see some quant uh, some um, some prices coming in, and you can see the prices here uh, are coming in, and I. When I go into my overview of the, of, the, of the calculation, I can see my calculation is there. The only thing I've got right now is the cost price and the sales price. And uh, as you can see, the cost and sales price are the same. That means this contractor is not earning any money on this project. So I need to do something. I need to go in and put in a margin. So in order to do that, I click uh, a margin in by going here and putting in the word margin. In Danish, it's called Dekningsbidrag. This is the actual uh, the thing, the amount of money that the contractor is going to earn on the project. So when I click that, 
I have the possibility of going in and earning money on uh, the hire of machinery and so on. I'm just going to put some figures in here, very arbitrary figures. And uh, for example, I want to earn 30% on the, the wages used on the project and I'm going to use 30% on the materials. And when I click that and click OK, yeah, you will see that the margin comes in here, so the cost price plus the margin gives the sales price. But that's not all, because I also need social costs on wages. So I can go in there again, and I can uh, put in uh, some social costs, uh, because uh, holiday pay and so on. I can uh, click OK to that, and I can earn money, uh, or put some uh, social costs, and in Denmark it's about 30 43.6% I believe. This is just a rough figure and the social costs come in. There's also something, some costs in connection with running the building side. So I, I, I could go in and I can put in an addition based on the percentage. For example here I can write P for percentage and I can also write here establishing site, site costs and let's put in just a figure here of 3%. And uh, I can also put in uh, a percentage for running of site. So uh, I'll put in that. And uh, I put in a figure of, let's say, 4%. These are, again, arbitrary figures. And you, you'll be able to see those figures down here. So finally, with the VAT in Denmark, which is 25, we get the cost of actually uh, the project, which is, is here on this particular item. If I click on look at resources, I can see the time, the number of hours gone into the project for the different uh, types of, um, if I click on here, you can see the number of hours gone in for the different uh, types of uh, work, labor costs, and so on, for the different uh, types of people doing the work. Uh, the, the bricklayers, the, the, the joiners, the carpenters, the laborers, etc. So they, they go through here. Going back to the summary, uh, I, have, I can now, uh, once I've uh, costed the project, I can send it over, this over, to uh, my planning to get my uh, 4D uh, um, application through. So I'm sending this over to Microsoft Project, which is quite a cheap uh, um, program. And I'm sending the wages over. Notice the Danish word lun. It doesn't really work very well with salary in the English version, so I prefer to use the Danish version, and I teach my foreign students this word. And notice it goes over with seven and a half working hours a day. This seven and a half will come back to, so remember it. Click OK to that, and in a... In a few seconds, it uh, should open up a, a Microsoft project file, which you can see here. And you can see all the different activities, uh, the, the, the time has gone over. And if I insert a new column here and put uh, the word work, the work hours uh, are come over here. These are man hours. Uh, for example, the floor here takes 19.15 hours to do for one man. That's a duration of 2.55. How does that come about? Well, if we take our, our little calculator out here and take the 19.15 and divide it by um, seven and a half, which was the hours I asked you to keep a note of, you have 2.55, and that's 2.55 there. So one man, 2.5 days, and the workload is 19 and a half hours. Now, if I uh, split my screen, I will be able to see that this is a fixed piece of work. It's been measured up as a fixed piece of work. So I go into View, and I split my screen into details. And when I click on it, you can see it's fixed work. In other words, when I put on a resource here, for example, a laborer, and I put one unit on here, when I click OK, the 19.15 hours will come in there. You can see there. Uh, and it's fixed work. That means that the work doesn't change. But if you put on a, two laborers, the duration will be shortened. So keep an eye on the duration there and keep an eye on the bar there. So we, when I put on two guys on this, on this, two laborers on it and click OK, the bar shortens to, to half. And uh, in this way, I can put on resources for the different items like for example here I can put on mas uh, masonry a mason 
and when I click uh, number one on here, the hours goes down here. But if I put on two now, or let's say uh, let's say two, you can see the duration shortens. So I'm just I, in this way I can resource my my project uh, in order to get the right number of people in order to finish the work. Uh, at the time I want to. And remember, these hours are decided by the hours that were put in in the library in the first place. So if you didn't like, if you don't like these hours, you can always change them in the library so that the right number of hours comes through, or the hours that you want to come through, come through. Now I've put on my uh, resources, and the bars have shortened, obviously. Uh, I need to put on the, the title by going into format and clicking there. You can see the whole title of the project now. Uh, I can also now link these activities in the way I want them linked. Uh, in other words, I would do uh, maybe uh, floors first, walls, and then the roof, and then finally the windows. So I'll just sort these out. Uh, I can move the windows to last if I want to by uh, moving this because I will not put on the windows until the whole um, roof is on and the, the building is closed. So I'm, I'm just going to move these uh, to, to the end. And then I can start to link uh, the activities to each other. For example, I do this one uh, and that one first. And um, I would just link them together like that. And then once that's done, uh, I would take the, the, the floor uh, and link uh, the floor for the next story. Um, and in that way, I can uh, do floors, walls, alternatively. So. You can see this is how you link them together very easily. And I continue linking them in the in the right order uh, I want to do to link them. Now I, I have linked everything in the order I want them to be linked in. Uh, the next step would be actually to go in and, and put in a new column here. And uh, I'm going to call that column cost because I want to get the information from uh, Sigma into this cost column so that I can generate a cash or a liquidity flow, cash flow for this project so that the client can see how much money is being generated each month in the project. And uh, unfortunately, right now it doesn't go automatically over from, uh, from Sigma to MS project, so I need to copy it. So I just go into this here using the summary. I go into File and I uh, export it to Excel, and from there I can copy this page directly over into um, into MS uh, project. So here I have the items and I'm interested in the uh, the sales price so I'm, I'm really interested in this this uh, column here and I need to copy these items over into um, uh, to, to project in the appropriate place. For example the floor here I copy it and I manually bring it over into project and I paste it here against uh, the, the same item in the floor. And I can see the total costs coming up into the, the, uh, the project title. And this I will do for all the activities. I'm, unfortunately, I have to do it manually. Uh, but uh, maybe in the next version of uh, Sigma, they'll figure a way out to, uh, to bring it automatically over. Now we can see the total cost of the project, 1.6 million here. There is a difference, of course, uh, because if you look down here, we will see that the, the total cost is 1.7, and the difference is actually the, the, the site, uh, running of site, establishing of site. Um, and uh, now, uh, once I've got this, I've got the, the activities linked together, the next thing I can do is I can generate a cash flow for each month of uh, the project. So I will go into project and into reports here, costs, select, cash flow, edit that. So I have months instead of weeks. And when I select it again, uh, I should be able to get a cash flow showing the amount of uh, um, value generated by this project in the different months against the different activities. Uh, and uh, the total uh, is shown here. And uh, I can also uh, go into project and into reports and I can generate a workload showing the number of people on site. So if I choose resource usage and edit that, I can uh, look at the number of people on site by going into peak units here and clicking OK to that and selecting again. 
and this will tell me how many people are on site at any particular time during the course of the project and of course I will be able to design the uh, building site huts for the maximum number of people in any particular time. So um, what we've done right now is to go from uh, our model through to our calculation through to the planning. So when we save a baseline we can actually follow up the project and then we can write out interim certificates for each month and Sigma also has a solution for that because if I go into Sigma I can uh, generate a number of months for example here by clicking uh, this uh, interim certificate let's say that this is a six month project just to mention a, a figure uh, then uh, an Excel sheet will again open up and this will enable me to see the six months of the project and here we have the values of the different stories. We can do this in a different way if we want to. Uh, but for example, here uh, in the first uh, month, let's say I did 50% of the ground floor, then I would have a, a figure there. And uh, that's for the first interim certificate. For the next interim certificate, uh, I can uh, increase this to 70% and perhaps start on the next floor with 40%. And uh, the previous figure is, is uh, subtracted and we get the new uh, generation of value. And in this way, I also have the payment, which is based on the follow-up of this once I've saved the baseline here. And uh, that ends our uh, going through the project. We have looked at the model. We have looked at the type coding through the library. And we have come up uh, with a calculation. And then finally, we have done a, uh, uh, a planning, uh, the, the full uh, 4D and 5D uh, suite. Uh, and that ends this video.